On tonight's show, I'm joined by the lead singer of The Merchants, choreographer Kaylee Morris joins us, and magician David Burgess. It's gonna be absolutely fire. Can you stop doing that? Thank you for coming, thank you for tuning in at home. It's a lovely Friday night with Dean Aldridge, baby. You enjoying it so far? Hope you do, hope you do. Um, kids are back in school, I'm made up. I enjoy the walks to school. I enjoy when I'm, at, when I'm on the schoolyard with my daughter. And obviously back in our day, yeah, I'm one of them dads, back in our day. There used to be names, there used to be girls' names, were just like Stacy and Becky and Amy, easy names. Now you've got names like Nevea. I asked one of the mums on the yard the other day, why did you call your daughter Nevea? She was like, it's heaven, spelled backwards. <laughs> don't you just sniff a line of coke on Friday off the Bible? Why are you trying to be all religious now? I just don't get it. Guys, I'm not going to keep you waiting for your first guest. I never do because I'm such a good host. It's the lead singer of the merchants. It's Harry, baby. <laughs> Welcome to the adolescent scam You can turn the other cheek You splintered Kindle dried and sat But in front of the fire she breathes You're going up Have you had enough But think you dabble a little more You're given the opportunities But she's showing you the door When you're on the road and you play to the same beat The crescent moon from a hotel window It's hard to escape the heat You're going off, have you had enough? I think you've already planted the seed You risk it all when you're on the course It's a mystery to me Why would you waste your time? Cause the forbidden fruit tastes better when you're high And lack of the promised land Act like there's nothing to man The old folks from back home They're never gonna understand Just tricks to pull the reins You'll need a stitch or a quick repent to operate A non-intense space so it won't clog her brain There's no intent to stop and now there's enough to break And there's enough to break Only you lose Why would you waste your time? Forbidden fruit tastes better when you're high Lack of the promised land Act like there's nothing to man The old folks from back home They're never gonna understand Ladies and gents, please welcome my first guest of the evening. It's Harry, the lead singer from The Merchants. Thank you for coming on, mate. Nice one for having me, mate. Yeah, glad to be here. Harry, something I need to touch on straight away, mate. We just heard you play a song there, and you're actually an unsigned band. 
Yeah, unfortunately, we're still, we are still unsigned, yeah. So anyone who is watching, make sure you get in touch. If you're in any sort of position to sign a band, because I reckon he's an incredible mate. Oh, nice one, yeah. So tell me, tell me briefly about the band, mate. Who's, who else makes, makes up the... The rest of the crew, should I say? <laughs> yeah, so uh, there's another Harry actually, which uh, I'm obviously Harry number one. He won't, he won't, he won't mind me saying that either. Um, who's our drummer? Our bassist Joe Abraham and our guitarist Ernesto Sandoval. And how did you all form? How did you all get together? Uh, me and Joe went to school together. We played in bands together for, for a few for years. Well, I've only ever played in bands with Joe. Uh, we know Strachan because he went to a school around the corner. Um, he's played in other bands. He played in a band called Capasudos, and as soon as I found out that they broke up, we quickly got onto him. You know what I mean? <laughs> because he's a boss drummer. Um, like and then, that. Yeah, too right. And uh, Ernesto, he's actually moved 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 over here about three years ago from Mexico, and we met him through one of our mates, yeah, yeah. Um, who who he lives with now. And, yeah, he's boss and stuff, yeah, so yeah. we quickly got him on board as well, yeah. So, has the band got any dates booked in coming up this year or anything like that? Is he performing anywhere? Yeah, we've got a couple booked in so far. We've, we're have we going down to Scotland, which is our first one back after all this COVID, which is on the 30th, the 29th of July. Right, ne- yeah. Nearly, nearly <laughs> got it wrong, 29th of July. We're sporting the Royston Club in... Um, in the garage, it's called, on Sucky Hall Street. So that's our first time out of the city, and that's yeah, yeah. so we can't wait for that one. Uh, we've got our main gig, actually, our main headline gig in uh, Liverpool, so make sure you all get down to that one. That's on the 18th of September. Um, tickets are going fast. That's in Heebie Jeebies in the basement. Everyone, yeah. everyone loves a night out in Heebie Jeebies. Right, those days, these used to go off. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So, besides that, where else can people hear you? You're on all platforms, download all your music everywhere, is it? Yeah, we're on, we're on, we're on the Spotify, Apple Music, the Deezer, all, all of that. So, you can, you can catch us on there uh, on all the social media as well, Facebook. We're uh, at the Merchants UK. At the Merchants underscore UK. <laughs> get all that right. <laughs> Make sure you get that right, so fucking get lost otherwise. Right, so, mate, thank you, as I say, for coming on. I know it was only a brief um, brief interview tonight, but I believe you're going to play another song for us yeah. at the end of the show. So, stick around for that, and we'll be seeing Harry again later on. Thank you for coming on, mate. Nice one, mate. So, my next guest is head choreographer from Fantasy Performers. It's Carly Morris. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for coming on. Thanks. All right, I know it's, um, it's a busy time for you at the minute, you've got all sorts going on. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what your company actually does? Yeah, so what we do is we um, we perform songs, it's cover songs from musicals from the 1920s right up to the 1960s. Um, I choreograph everything, so everything that I choreograph is inspired mainly from musicals from the 50s, mm. um, but what we cover as in songs comes from like the 20s to the 60s so it's inspired mainly by people like Marilyn Monroe, Jane Russell, Julie Andrews and then I have a male singer who covers things from people like Elvis and Fred Astaire Um, and then also what we do is most of the show is um, it's performed live but we also we made movies that were inspired by the 1920s and 30s black and white like slapstick comedy yeah, yeah. musicals and the projected throughout the show so we've made little clips so in between the the live performances you have that on as well yeah, yeah. Ah, brilliant yeah. so what's your um, what's your favorite era to cover if you have to pick one decade i'd say probably the 50s, 50s. i think the 50s yeah because my biggest inspiration is marilyn monroe and someone called jane russell which i don't know if many people have heard of her but she was she was a big movie star in the 40s and 50s and she was in a film called Gentlemen Prefer Blondes with Marilyn Monroe yeah. which was one of the biggest musicals of that time um, and then Marilyn Monroe also did a film called Some Like It Hot right, okay. which is one of the biggest comedy musical films of that time so I'd say definitely the 50s. For people who haven't seen it where where did your idea start? When was it like, like this is what I'm starting this is what I want to do and um, probably from when I was about three or four. Was it? Yeah, like I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I used to, I used to watch musicals from, but most of them were vintage musicals. So, um, I used to watch things like Bugsy Malone, Mary Poppins, Sounds of Music, Annie, um, and but it wasn't until later I got into like the Marilyn Monroe and Jane Russell and Judy Garland kinds of musicals. But from watching that, I just thought that's what I want to do. So I did, and then I um, I went to dance lessons, I went to singing lessons, I auditioned for just anything yeah, yeah. that I could. And this is now 
what it's come to, your yeah. own your own company and you're out yeah. there. You've got a gig coming up as well, haven't you, for people to come and yeah. see when's that? Um twenty second of May. It's Saturday twenty second of May, it's in the castle on Hope Street. Yeah. Um so basically yeah, it's it's just like a compilation of covers from musicals from that time. I've choreographed everything, um and then we'll show the little movie clips. And where well. can people buy tickets for it? Um, so all the tickets are on Eventbrite, they're also on our um, website, or you can just buy them from the venue, from the Casa. Straight from the Casa, yeah. Yeah, straight from the Casa, yeah. Brilliant. So is it something that people can get involved in? Is there, if there's performers out there who like the, the idea of it, is there a way they can get involved in doing it, Bridget? Or? Um, at the moment, we haven't really taken anyone on because of all of the COVID yeah, restrictions yeah. haven't allowed us to... Um, you know to rent out rehearsal yeah, yeah. spaces and things like that so obviously i mean i do want to expand the company and take more people on but at the, moment, at the moment as yeah. things are we ha we just haven't been able to so there's there's not many of us working on it at the moment I but mean, in it, the future definitely it, it would be great if like one day that was a thing for us all to be able to just go and watch every friday you know what i mean if we <laughs> yeah. could just, it's it's different, isn't it? It's yeah. unique. It's got its own yeah. uniqueness. There's nothing yeah. like that happening in Liverpool where you yeah. can go and like watch stuff that Marilyn Monroe done. And, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it is, it's a brilliant idea. Yeah. Um, so you said there, you haven't really took many on. How many cast members have you actually got at the moment? Um, we've got three. So there's two of us who do the live performances. There's three of us who do the films. Yeah, yeah. So the acting and the films. Um, but we are booked into the cast every two months. And we're at some other events as well throughout the year. So we're in San San Sandbach Sandbach <laughs> Sandbach Town Hall um, in August and September, and we're in St George's Hall in September as well. Brilliant. Well, as I said, thank you for coming on. You've been a great guest, and hopefully thank everyone you. who's watching will obviously get behind the idea and support it because, as I said, there it's got its own uniqueness, and yeah. I'll definitely be buying a ticket. I don't know about <laughs> everyone else. Okay. Thank you for coming on, Carly. Okay. Oh, thanks. For thank you very me. much, guys. Carly Morris. So my next guest is magician David Burgess. Thank you for coming on, David. Oh, hi, mate. Thank you for coming on, mate. No, you're more than welcome. How are we? How is the um, How's the magic been, mate? Obviously, you haven't. Have you been doing much Zoom or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, so I've been doing a few Zoom shows. I don't really, I don't really like them as much because it's you kind of got the interaction, and yeah, when yeah. when you when you're doing tricks to people and you get that like wow factor, and then you get the banter. Whereas you can get the banter over the camera, but it's not as it's not the same as like being performing not live. Not beats a large yeah. show, does yeah, it? Yeah, no, nothing does like this because you love it because it's just the best thing because like the adrenaline gets pumping and then you're like, oh, what's what's someone gonna do? And think of when tricks go wrong. People don't know, but that's that's the that's the yeah, buzz yeah. about it. So how I I just can't work it out. How does someone decide I want to be a magician? How does that come about? So um, when I was six, I got a Paul Daniel set, um, and then just kept me hand in it and kept doing it. But that wasn't really where my career path was. I went into sales, believe it or not. And then <laughs> I, I used I used the magic tricks to close people in sales, which is dead funny. <laughs> but um, but yeah, then um, when I was uh, about three years ago I've been doing magic for about three years professionally um, I got actually sacked from one of my sales jobs never been sacked in my life and then my wife was six months pregnant at the time you hadn't cut the manager in half no 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 not like, not, not like that not like that but it was, I, had, I had met my target believe it or not oh, right, okay. and I've never I'm not, I know being a magician I should be able to go and sleep and you're back on there I know I do hypnosis as well and just give me a hand you did not sack yeah, me yeah, before yeah, did me and sleep now I'm missing this is a joke yeah. I'm back in the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, imagine that. <laughs> well, that's, imagine that. No, that's what that's that's how easy it is. But anyway, that's another that's another show. Um, but no. So when I when I um, I got sacked me from me, um, never been sacked in my life because I hadn't hit my target for three months. And I thank the company to this day that sacked me because otherwise I wouldn't be doing something which I love. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was selling water coolers of all things. But when you're in, going in, they've already contracted in, so there's nothing you can do. Because especially you know, scout sense of yeah, humour. Yeah, yeah. You're going in, they're a one-man band. You say, oh, uh, what? well, I've got a tap there, mate. So why do I want to pay? You know, however much it is for what? So I was like, sound. Um, so they, they knew that my wife was pregnant, so they paid me a full month's wage. And obviously, I then had to go back to my wife, who's six months pregnant, and anybody who's anybody who's watching, you know. Do you know the struggles of that? Yeah, yeah. And I said, Oh, I am. I've got a great idea. Why don't I do my magic full time? Which obviously you can imagine the um, the encouragement that my wife <laughs> gave me. You know, oh yes, darling, that's amazing. You know. Uh, but anyway, so because I had that buffer of my wage, and then I thought, you know what? And I just I'm gonna do it. And then uh, you know the rest is history. I've been doing it ever since, and I love it. Being all over the world, you know, perform for Formula One. I do Liverpool Football Club on a regular basis, and. 
Yeah, so there's loads of celebrities. What's the biggest audience you've done? Uh, the biggest audience was about 600... Was it 600? I think it was about 800 people. Uh, yeah, 800 people in... Um, it was an award ceremony. And it, I, I was... It I was, couldn't even imagine that, mate. Well, it, was, it, was, it was... It was... Well, well I'm, I'm all right, because I, I say it. But it died, it died on its head in regard. It went well. But it's like when you overanalyze things. Yeah. But there's this trick... And I'll never forget it, but I learned by it, which is a good thing. And it's basically, um, I have back to back with the audience member, and it's this book prediction. So basically, I, I'm reading the book, and, and I, it's like a comedy act. Yeah, yeah. So then he's got his back, and I say, Take out the book, look at page number, and I pull out an identical book. Um, but the killer line is the book pages are blank at the end. But I forgot that there's a big monitor screen <laughs> at the top. So as he's back to back, he's looked up, see me with this book, and then turned round. And I've just gone. That's gone. <laughs> uh, panicked, legged it off stage, got another trick, and I was like, instead of just flowing it. But but that was when I was like in the early days of getting into it. Now now I just like I'd know how to handle that. Now you're right on the page. Yeah yeah, I'll be like, I'll be like, yeah, darling, who would you like me to autograph this to? <laughs> nice. Uh, but no, but it was it was a nerve wracking time. But yeah. Brilliant. Be your magic, mate. I wish you nothing but success. You're going to do a trick for us, isn't it? Yeah yeah, I'll do a trick for you. Um, away from magic now though as well. You you do something else with your magic, like you're in, you inspire little people. You, like, yeah, yeah. Not little yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're not out there inspiring little people, yeah, yeah. but you inspire people to the, um, yeah. get involved with the mental health and stuff like that. Yeah, that's amazing. It's a good job we've got a good producer who can edit that out, didn't you? <laughs> leave it in. It looks more real if you leave it yeah. in, so let's <laughs> no, but, make me mum laugh that yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, no, but I do go into school, so you are quite correct. Um, no, so I've, I've got a mental, a mental health first aider. Um, I'm also a, a um, mindset coach, that's what I do, because obviously when we had lockdown, yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm master coach, I'm an NLP, timeline therapy and hypnosis practitioner, so when I, when I've done that for myself, for selfish reasons, because um, the reason I got into mental health, and if this triggers anybody, you know, I'll, I'll get you to put some details yeah, on reach out to you or me, um, but when I was younger, I was bullied like most people are, and then... Um, and then I was I used to have suicidal thoughts from the young age of eight because obviously lockdown as yeah, well yeah. with affecting them people. But um and then when I was about seventeen I was going out with a girl and she danced prerogatively with one of my eight in front of me and I was drunk and I and I used to be on drugs and used to, I went down I went down a, a wrong path. And um but anyway, so she was dancing, I said, Don't do that. So she'd done it again and then literally everything came back, all the bullying and everything, and then I ran out of my garden. Went ran home, don't even know I got home. Um, but I remember standing up in the in this bar, bar headbutting this metal table three times, and then just ran out, phoned her, and said, "Tell everybody in the car that I love them, and I'll see them whenever." And then um, ran round the side of my house, um, put this, just grabbed the nearest cord, ran this, and like a gazebo. And I'm six foot four, so 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 I, I make joke of this because it can be quite heavy for people. Yeah, yeah. But I make a joke of it now, and I go into schools and do like talks on bullying and stuff, and. And when I do this um, this this talk, it like the kids are like, wow, okay, words can affect people. But anyway, so I put this cord around this, and I'm six foot four, so if you can imagine, I've had to bend my knees to, to try and yeah, yeah. hang myself because it's a trestle thing. So it was just a cry for help. But then what happened is as it was restricting me airway, I remember my brain saying, stand up, and I was like, no, no, no one loves me, no one cares. So I just remember just passing out, and then next minute I woke up on the floor, and my nose was all bleeding. And I ran into the house, into the bathroom, and said, Dad, Dad, I've done something stupid, I've done something stupid. And he went, what's on, what's on? I said, I've tried to kill myself. And he was like, oh, you silly bugger, brushed it off. And then he went out and he checked the cord and he said, son, you're here for a reason. Um, and I said, why? He said, because that cord is like made out of an industrial strength seal and it doesn't snap. So you're obviously here for a reason. And then that just took me on the on the path of like, you know, why am I here? And then um, it was only just really recently during the lockdown, when, when we had the lockdown, um, that I found that I'm here to help people yeah, yeah. who are going through that shite time to come and you know you know it's okay to be not be okay especially for men because men bottle everything up and they and they think like they have to be the, the man of the house and Definitely, you know yeah. especially when you've got like a family and stuff I, I I didn't have a family when I was when I when I did try and do it but you know look at look at where I am now with two beautiful kids and a beautiful wife you know if that had happened none of them would be here happened, yeah. so so you know it's so that's why I want to be the voice for people, especially men, to open up about the feelings. Exactly. You know, you don't have to. You, men, you know, it's like the old adage: men don't cry. You, you can't cry if you have a good sob. I sobbed the Bambi lad to tell you. Like, oh. <laughs> no, listen, I can't thank you enough for opening up about your story. Obviously, I'm sorry that what you went through back then, but obviously, it's put you on a platform now to help people. So I do want to just say, like, if there is anyone who needs the help, get in touch with you. Yeah, yeah, you can reach, reach, get, reach, get reach out to me. Yeah. 
Reach Sorry. out to anybody. I mean, I mean, and there's with the mental health first aid that there's a, there's a thing which I want to um, let everybody know is that if you ask somebody, so so if I said, "How are you, mate? Are you okay? What do you got? What's your automatic response?" Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, and then I say, "No, how are you really?" Yeah, and then you just pause. And this is anybody who's list, anybody who's watching. Um, if you just do that pause and you listen to them um, unjudgmentally, so you say, "How are you, mate?" If you think there's something good with somebody, say, "How are you?" And say, "No, how are you really?" And you just look them dead in the eye, and you just know that. They, you say I'm here for you, yeah, yeah. and then they'll then either open up, and then you know you never know you could save somebody's life from, because when they open up and you listen, then and then you and then you say okay let's 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 do this together rather than them thinking that they're on their own. Yeah, yeah. So that's it's, it's amazing what you're doing, mate. It really is. So obviously a big thank you, no. a load of gratitude if you are helping people out as well, mate. So. Um, just before we let you go, obviously we need to uh, see this magic trick. Yeah, yeah. You know, for uh, showing us that ending, yeah. on, ending on a high note. Sound, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, edit, we'll edit the uh, table in. I'll put the table in. We'll, we'll, uh... we'll bring the table on. Stick around. We'll see this in about five seconds. Right, guys. This is David Burgess with the card trick. What have you got for us? So, Dean, I'm going to leave you with a souvenir. Okay. Now, not many people get to, get to have a souvenir, so... What I just want you to do is just reach in and take any card you want. I want to take that one. Then. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to not look at it. I just want you to sign your name on it. Okay. And just show the camera. Just make sure that the camera can see. Does camera got that? I'm looking yeah. away. I'm, I'm looking at the screen so you know I'm not cheating or anything. And have you signed it and show the signature yet? Yeah. And then recap the pen and take the pens back first because they're expensive. Okay. Make your type before me. <laughs> so you ready? Watch. I'm going to take the, the card. And I'm just going to dry the ink. What was the five, six spades? No, I'm just joking, mate. I'm going to push it into the deck, watch the deck, roughly about halfway. Watch one, two, three. See the deck disappear? Now, when I first saw that, I forgot to clap as well, but that's okay, Dean. You saved me applause at the end, I get that, mate. But watch if I just take <laughs> the actual card, and that's the only sign, six of spades. But I know what you're thinking, if this envelope was here, where's the deck on? Well, look, if you look in my back pocket, there is the rest of the deck. I can, I can take it a little bit further though for you. This is now the only signed card like this in the entire world. So even if you met another magician, you'd never sign the card the same way. It's impossible. So you ready? Watch. All I'm going to do is control it to the top. So there's your card. No, it's not. Click your fingers. And what was the card? Six, Six spades. of spades. There you go. Six spades. Click your fingers again. Watch. Ready? Watch. There's the six. Have you got the six there? I hope not. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. No, I'm not messing that. I'm, I'm good. I'm not that good. No, I'm just. I just like to mind you. Up. There's the six on top. Freak you out. Push that in. Did you feel that go in? Yeah. Click your fingers. I'm gonna do that when it jumps to the top. Amazing, right? Click your fingers again. When I go like that, it's back in the middle. It's good, that isn't it? I'm not gonna lie. You look a little bit underwhelmed, but look, you see, it's back on top. <laughs> now I'm gonna show you how quick it changes. Watch if you push that in for me. Watch, you see that? It's when it jumps to the top. No worries, thanks very much, mate. Have a good one. Take it easy, all the best. Now, to end the show with the second song of the evening, it's Harry from the Merchants, ladies and gents. Bye, bye, mate. With Dean Aldridge, here we go. I'm struck fool with his head up his ass He sees the summer's bloom as a thing of the past You're on the right track, brother You've only just found your path She sees the morning sun rise every day Because the day's still sleeping when she is awake We're on a slow boat, baby We're gonna get there someday so save me It's not what it seems That life's crazy The things you could be You're either living in a bubble With a pocket full of cash Or you're a glum sock fool With your head up your ass Wear your hard hat gloves, your high vis vest, or your name badges pinned on your chest. You're pulling pints or pushing pens. You wish away your life, waiting for the weekend, and you're crazy. It's not what it seems, life's amazing. 
things you could be You're either living in a bubble With a pocket full of cash Or you're a glum strong fool With your head up your ass The past on mass will haunt you the Cracks are there to fall through You're sinking out of sight trap you said won't hold me This paper trail is only Stepping stone in time Ah, won't save me It's not what it seems, that life's crazy the Things you could be You're either living in a bubble With a pocket full of cash Or you're a glum stock fool With your head up your ass Ha ha ha!